This is the Ryder and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Check out the Southtown Hyundai Advantage at southtownhyundai.ca. Gold is too old for trick-or-treating. We talk about it every year. It's a hot-button topic. It gets the people going. When I was in grade 7, yeah, a teenager answered the door when my friend Kirsty and I were trick-or-treating. And she's like, you're too old to be trick-or-treating. And Whoa. my friend Kirsty was like, excuse me? And we got into a fight with this teenager. A fist fight? No, just like a verbal fight. Oh. Would have been way cooler if you fought. And then my friend Christy was like, just because you don't have any friends and you had to stay home tonight, you could be trick-or-treating too. They were so mean to each other. And then when we were walking away, she gave us the middle finger out of her front window. So that was 13. Is that about the age you think would be? I was probably 12 just because I'm trying to do the math. I graduated when I was 17. Oh, so. cool. Bring that up as much as you can. Yeah, I'm pretty smart. I started young. A lot of people graduated when they were 17. Okay. Anybody born after June? Fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so how old is too old to trick or treat? Because apparently if you're already in junior high, that's too old for some people. See, I'm of the opinion if I see like a 16, 17 year old, especially if they're out with like a little brother or little sister, love it. We'll hook them up with like the best candy just because I appreciate it. And I think there's a opportunity there for the older kids to like set the tone, use their manners, mm-hmm. things like that, that can be a good influence for the kids. Plus, what would you rather them doing? Like, I look back when I was in high school, and like I was probably trick-or-treating with a couple of my buddies. I didn't look like I was as old as I was, right? Right. <laughs> but, like, the other high school kids were, like, breaking into cars and toilet papering houses and throwing eggs at things and breaking. I would much rather you come to my house and grab a Krispy Crunch than break my light. So... Trick or treating for the win for me. Okay. Like, don't we want to keep kids as young and innocent for as long as possible? If I found out my daughter was going out trick or treating when she was sixteen, I'd be pumped. Yeah, but at the same time, you'd be like, get a job and buy your own candy. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Like, we were raised a little different, eh? Hey? Like, Maybe. I don't know. You had a job at 16. I mean, I didn't. Yeah. You didn't? No. I, maybe in the summers. Yeah, in the summers I did. Oh, my gosh. What did you do? What well, were we, you doing? I had to do farm work, like cut grass and drive the grain truck and things like that. Okay. So I guess I kind of had a job, but I was trick-or-treating. Like, we we were kids until we were in high school. We were playing, like... Hide and go seek in the dark, kick the can, things like that, when our classmates were boozing already. So when did you have your first night out of partying? Like, how old were you? 17, 18? Yeah, 16 probably. Okay. I think I went to the grad party when I was 15 and got turned on like three beer. Wow. Really cranked her (laughs) out, yeah. Uh, My friends and I would drink, we'd pick up, well, we wouldn't be able to buy the alcohol, We'd have someone boot for us, and mm-hmm. we would each get a six-pack of Mountain Crest. We knew what we were doing. Yeah. <laughs> then if you spill it, you don't feel bad. Damn good beer. That was their <laughs> slogan. I think that's the difference. That, okay. Like, those are the options. What would you rather your 16, 17-year-old doing? Going and getting candy or ripping it up, passing out in a field and pretending you stayed at your friend's house. Fair enough. Okay, quick poll on the text line. We genuinely <laughs> do want to know what age you think is too old. For or trick or treat, or do you yeah. think you can trick or treat? Like, should I go out? You do. You do like chocolate bars and chips. I love chocolate <laughs> bars and chips. <laughs> Play one oh seven. I'm trying to get my fifteen year old lazy ass daughter out of out of the house to say, "Hey, man, like you're fifteen, you're not dead." <laughs> put your costume, put your sheet on. You're being a ghost, and we're doing this. I couldn't even get her to carve a pumpkin last night, so I carved three. And my son did one. <laughs> I actually do respect that you're trying to get her interested in Halloween, but, like, she can't be going trick-or-treating without a costume. I feel like that's what we need to be discussing. Do you give candy and chocolate to someone that shows up without a costume on? No, because they're tricking. They're, like, they're taking that candy, they're eating it, and then they're going to egg the house that next They're going out at midnight. They're sneaking out of Chris's house. I even said to her, I even said to her, okay, well, look, if you're not going to wear a costume and you want to whatever, then you need to at least egg someone, do something. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Some, something. Good. Woo! Brought to you by A&D Tutoring. Wonder, learn, grow. For more info, visit andtutoring.com. Play 107.
Istanbul, a city of 15 million people, is known for having a lot of cats on the streets. And they have a good relationship with these cats. A lot of people, if they see that they're sick or they need to get neutered, people will bring them in and fix oh. them and then put them back. Oof, I was hoping you were <laughs> going to say they'll neuter them right there on the street. No, no, okay, no, no. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's even a documentary about how they get along with these cats on the street. There was an interior architect who was just walking through the, the park and decided to put up some plastic boxes that could shelter some of the cats. And they were taken away because they were seen as an eyesore. So so instead, he was like, okay, well, I'm going to actually build some really aesthetically pleasing cat houses and put those out. Okay. Even talk to the mayor. And they were like, yeah, we approve this. Go ahead. They're beautiful. They're even chained down on the ground. And ever since then, it's just taken off. There's other cities that have reached out saying, can we get some of these in our area? Awesome. So there's thousands of them. And they have like cute little beds inside of them, little water bowls that people can refill when they're walking through the parks. I just think it's kind of a cute idea to take care of their felines. Well, and a great way to get them in one place so you can make sure that the majority are spayed and neutered that way mm-hmm. too, right? Yeah, cool. Yeah. Tell me something good. My story is about Michael J. Fox, who has just hit $1.5 billion raised. When he was 29 years old, he was diagnosed with Parkinson's. And so his mission uh, since then, he's now 60, has been to find a cure for it. And he says he will not stop until he does. And because of him, a lot of great advancements have been made in um, just handling the disease Mm -hmm. and like research lessening some of the symptoms and things like that anyway just big ups to him 1.5 billion raised is no joke that is a ton of money wow and uh like i said he his plan is to not stop until he finds a cure and he's canadian hell yeah tell me something good time for the seven at seven what's it gonna be today writer and lisa we're counting down the top seven Halloween candies that you can get while trick-or-treating. Yeah, so we're compiling this list based off of all the texts that we're getting in and the comment section on our Facebook page, which is taking off. And I hate to break it to you, but it looks like candy corn is going to have to crack the top seven. I uh, No, I will not allow that. You kind of have to. That's how it works. Candy corn is disgusting. It's not going on the list. Okay, so are we just doing Lisa's top seven at seven, or are we doing everyone's collectively? Does it have to be on the list? Yeah, I think it does. There's another one you're going to be real angry about, too. Why don't I put them together? No, that doesn't work. They have to, I think they have to both make the cut. Is it Wagon Wheel? (laughs) No, the smushed Wagon Wheel. (laughs) Because they always get so smushed with those other candy did not make the list. It's so upsetting to know that candy corn is going to be on the top seven. But okay, whatever. Way she goes. We will go through some of the honorable mentions first before we get into it. We have the Mars bar did not make the list too small. What? The size That's that my you favorite. get. I know, but the size that you get. In the trick-or-treat bags is a very small Mars bar. That's fine. That just means you can eat seven. No, it didn't make the list because of that. Oh, my God. If you put Snickers on instead of Mars, I'm going to lose my mind. They're the same size. Snickers did not make the list, did not make the top seven. Okay. This list sucks. No. Okay. Well, then you just do it. (laughs) I'm trying my best to get all the... Okay. I'm done talking. The list is what it is. Because of how many texts we're getting, so I'm done being a brat. Honorable mention. Didn't make the list. The Starburst two-packs almost made the list. Well, it shouldn't make the list because the odds of you getting two yellow ones Mm -hmm. are pretty high lately, I've noticed. I think they honestly do just throw their trash at those ones. Or or you get one of this one orange one and one yellow, and you're like, where's the pink? Where's the red? Exactly. Uh, Kit Kat did not make the list. What is happening? What is on this list? The 7 at 7 on Play 107. We got a text this morning from uh, from Tyler that said, if Reese peanut butter cups aren't on this list, I will choose violence today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is because of the overwhelming response on the text line and on Facebook. Candy corn is number seven. I hope that everybody who indulges in candy corn this season gets a cavity. No, you can't. Well, it's certainly not candy corn, I'll tell you that. Yeah, thank you. Sorry. 
disgusting. But I think it's like full size pop. Full size pop needs to be on there. Like if you if you get a pop can, like a, a good size pop can, not those little mini guys. Okay, question though. Didn't you get annoyed because it would make your pillowcase really heavy? No, because you just drink it while you walk to all the other houses. <laughs> Shotgun it. <laughs> that is so funny. What's your name? Like you guys did, Catherine. <laughs> just washed out everything else with more sugar. But it was always warm. Like they never gave you an ice cold one. So if you're listening right now and you're someone that yeah, hands yeah. out full pop, you gotta make sure they're cold for the kids. Good PSA. I like that. Put those in the fridge. <laughs> that, that is a really, really good idea. <laughs> thank you. Oh, we appreciate it. Thank you, Catherine. You're Thanks. so funny. Have a good day. You too. Bye. Bye. All right. So uh Pop cans. So far, we have candy corn and full pop cans. This list is bad. Pop cans did not make the top seven. Oh, that was an honorable mention. Honorable mention and also a public service announcement. Your education superstation. <laughs> so, number six, the five cent candy bags. And I mean like what you normally would have bought as a five cent candy that they shrunk and put in a bag. Your peaches. Uh, fuzzy peaches, your Swedish berries, your Sour Patch Kids. That Sweetest all, fish. That all falls into the same category today. Okay. We had to do some combining to make it legit. Cherry Blasters. Exactly. So those are number six. Okay. That's all right. Number five. Surprising the response we got in this one. And it is one of my favorites. Wonder Bar. The Wonder Bar is a nice bite. Good size. a great size, bite. And... It's kind of a unicorn. You don't see as many of them as you do coffee crisps. And you know what I mean? Again, Kit Kats. That's why they didn't make the list. Okay, but Kit Kats should be on the list. Oh, they're too little, too. You want what is that... the deal with you and the size? It doesn't matter. I feel like there's a big difference when it comes to size. Why are we both whispering all of a sudden? Oh, What's bro, happening? Like Owen Wilson. Uh, number four. Didn't want this to be on the list, to be honest. Rockets. I knew it. I knew rockets would make it. Man. Do you ever watch someone eat rockets and you're like, look at you. Idiot. Look at you eating those individual <laughs> little powdered <laughs> cup pucks. So that's number four. We're Unbelievable. Doing the top seven. You know, I just picture that person that grabs a sleeve of rockets <laughs> and they like unroll each side and they lay it out on their desk <laughs> and they're talking to you and they're just grabbing one at a time and you're like, go home. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing the top seven Halloween candies as voted by you. Lots of votes on the Rockets. So be mad at yourself. <laughs> it's a disgrace. Number three is the Reese Cup, which nice to what? see it on that's the list. That's not number one? No. That's number three. It's number three, yeah. What could be better than a Reese Cup? I was betting for sure that would be number one. Number two, we had to do another combination. Chips. None of the specific flavors would have made the top seven on their own. None of them had the weight to, but combined, they are a force. I will say I would get really pumped when I saw Doritos. Exactly. In and my pillowcase. they fill up your pillowcase, which is just like a heartwarming thing to have happen. Okay. I still think Kit Kat should be in that spot, but. Chips, number two. And finally, the number one, any full size chocolate bar. Yes. We're in agreement. That's fine. That's well, fine. Especially if they're Reese Cups or a Mars bar. Full-size chocolate bars. Just beast. That's such a power move. Okay. Natalie just wrote in with an honorable mention. Cold, hard, change. <laughs> Cash. Yeah, or cold cuts. Can you please hand those <laughs> out this year? That is amazing. That's what I'm giving out this year. Bags of ham. What's up, man? Hey, hey. The mini mini Mars bars and the mini Twix, the chocolate to caramel ratio in the Mars and the chocolate to cookie and caramel in the Twix. Unbeatable. The, the mini the, you can't you can't beat them. Yeah. I, I know big ones are big big chocolate bars are awesome. I love big chocolate bars, but when we always got the little ones, we always separated out the good stuff, hit it, and then when our parents came, it was kind of like okay, well we can take and just okay, binge. What are you chucking? What what are you chucking out? And it's like well we don't like these ones, but they didn't see where we hid the, the Mars and the Twix and all the little mini ones. Right. Have you ever eaten a twi mini Twix upside down? It'll rock your world. Like you're upside down no, or the mini? the chocolate bar. <laughs> I thought maybe like you were dressed as a bat for that Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> it's chocolate. It's 
Uh, what's your name? Dan. Call the show oh anytime, Dan. Oh my gosh, hilarious. <laughs> Take it easy, Effort. dude. Came across something pretty cool. A guy has uh, made an a cappella version of the famous James Bond song. Just him? Yeah, yeah. It's looped. So okay. he's got a bunch of loops happening. I so. thought it was like a group of people singing together. No? Okay. We have a, a loop button here, but just one, okay? So we're going to do, I want to do a theme song too. Uh, maybe we'll do Family Matters. Remember that fire track? Yeah. Okay, so we'll combine. I'm not very confident with this, but you think you, <laughs> you can nail it? Yeah. L- live on the radio. Let's try. So we did the one pre-loop, right? And then we're going to sing over top of that. Speak for yourself. I'm not singing. Yeah, you got the sound effects in the first one. I'll I'll do the singing, okay? I need you to really get into this, though. Okay. Well, it's a rare condition this day and age to read in the good news on the newspaper page. Some people say it's even harder to find. Well, there must be some kind. I think we should stick to the professionals doing things like this. I am a professional. Okay. And now, here's another terrifying episode of Terror Tales! <laughs> Lana wrote in saying, I went to Scotland years ago and did a paranormal tour in Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Uh, sorry, Edinburgh. We went through part of the underground city into these massive vaults where they used to house people and they have had many strange things happen. As we reached the back vault, the tour guide was telling a story explaining why a candle had to be lit in that specific vault as they always had issues with their flashlights and one specific time, a woman had brought her daughter with her on the tour. When the flashlight went out, she grabbed for her daughter's hand, but she wasn't there. When the flashlight came back on, there she was in the far corner of the vault and explained to her mom and the rest of everyone of the people on tour that someone had led her there. When they asked if she thought maybe it was her mommy, she said, no, mommy doesn't have claws, which obviously was pretty creepy, creepy, but we all chalked it up to just being a story to help set the mood. That was until we got back to the flat we were renting and I noticed I had a large red mark across my chest that looked like a hand and an arm, almost as if someone had come from behind me and had their arm held across my chest. Plus there were three long scratches along my collarbone. They were definitely not there prior to the tour and the handprint was too big to be anyone I was traveling with. Not only that, (sighs) but Lana sent us a picture of the handprint on her chest. Just a terrifying story. Mommy doesn't have claws? I would have been out of there. I would have said, get me out of this vault (laughs) immediately. Bye. Bye. Play 107. Looking for some tips on how to recover quicker after a workout as I'm on day three now where I can't put my headphones on properly. Yeah. That's because these pipes are so ruthless. We got a text saying mix baking soda with water and that should help. But now Ryder and I are arguing in the studio. If it's in the bath? If you drink it or if you put it. (laughs) We don't know. Uh, Foam rolling a few (laughs) hours after a workout helps. It hurts bad, Josh says, but it's well worth it. Okay, that's a good tip. I like that. I feel like you drink the baking soda. Mm. You mix it with water. Tastes nasty, and so? I don't know. I've never heard of anybody drinking baking soda. Uh, okay, like it's obviously safe to ingest. There's got to but... be a couple people that are actually educated in this field that could text in and just uh, well, fa- fact check us, please. You know what? And I, I also do think though that 
people that have just worked out regularly. You don't have to be a scientist to know what works for you and your body. Right. At 780-784-7107. What do you got? So if you do light exercise, I know it seems crazy, but the next day you want to do light active recovery exercise, like go for a walk on a treadmill for 30 minutes or a bike because you got to flush out all that uh, lactic acid. I promise you it's the best way. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah, you bet. That one seems like it makes sense to me. So some of the other ones, I'm like, oh, really? A chocolate milkshake? Like what? You just like chocolate no. milkshakes. <laughs> yeah, there's no quick fix. It's just you got to get your heart pumping just lightly without resistance, and then it's uh, it'll get it all out of there. Terrific. Thank you, my man. You're welcome. Good Cheers. luck. Ryder and Lisa. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Play 107.